Disclaimer! So I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that you're here to see my spoiler-filled in-depth thoughts on the second season of Harley Quinn the Animated Series. I'm assuming I'm right, so because of that I won't be going into the giant info essay about Harley Quinn and the character in Harley Quinn the show. So if you didn't catch what I said earlier, or saw the thumbnail, or read the title, this is going to be filled with spoilers. Timestamps to every episode is on the screen in the description and comment section as per usual. Alright. Let's get into this, because I have a lot to say. New Gotham follows up immediately after the final joke, showing Gotham and anarchy. The episode includes Batman being gone, Harley missing her shot to take over Gotham, the introduction of Mr. Freeze, goons and henchmen taking over Gotham, the main five villains taking over Gotham, Harley being frozen, Harley being saved by her crew, Penguin dying, the GCPD being destroyed, Gordon going into retirement, Batman awaking from a coma. HOLY SHIT THE PACING OF THIS! Oh my god, if I thought the pacing was bad in the first season, it really goes hard in this episode, and it is a mess. Some of this shit could have been taken out or moved into another episode, but they just keep stacking thing on top of thing on top of thing in just the opening of the fucking season. Thankfully, the pacing is only this bad in this episode, and for the rest of the season, it's fine, but... Holy shit, was this a mess of a start. All the individual things that happen aren't bad, though. There are some great moments, like the Harley saving scene and King Shark. <laughs> the worst moment is Damian Wayne, but I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. Granted, he's not as bad as he was in the first season, but I still hate him. Overall, it's a fine episode, but the pacing is so fucked. Five and a half out of ten. Riddle you is... Oh god! The Riddler has taken place in a college and turned into his own university that includes clean water and power, so Harley plans to kill him and take all the water and power. Doesn't sound like it's gonna be that bad of an episode, right? Right? I cannot stress to you enough how much I fucking hate Stephanie! This entire episode is such a fucking chore to get through. Every other fucking scene is just Clayface being this annoying, preppy, basic bitch character that's so cringy and annoying that it makes me want to put up with Damian Wayne. On top of all that, you get the introduction of Barbara Gordon and Batgirl, and oh boy is this character assassination! Look, I'm all for change when it's executed right. This is not one of them. They took Barbara and made her just a fucking cringe fest and oh my god, don't even get me started on the face fuck that is Batgirl. Every second of this episode is a drag and it feels like it's a fucking hour long. There's one good moment in this entire episode and that's when Psycho and King Shark make a murder car. That's it. 0.5 out of 10. Okay. Trapped features Harley trying to break into Frieza's lair and failing miserably, so she gathers Ivy and Catwoman to go break into Dr. Trapp's museum and steal Firefly's flamethrower. You know how I said Ivy is the best character in this show? Yeah, this episode is not one of her highlights. Ivy spends the entire episode being an awkward mess around Catwoman, and it is not fun to watch. Look, I- it was a joy and relatable when Tobey Maguire did it in Spider-Man, aka the best movie of all time, but here, it, it's- it's not a joy at all. The subplot of this features Harley being a selfish cunt to Kite Man until he has her help him steal an engagement ring for Ivy. The ending, though, is really nice. Frank's also in this episode as well, and that's probably the best part of it. 5 out of 10. That is delicious. Finally, some good fucking food. Yeah, this is one of the best episodes of the season. It shows Harley and her crew finally getting into Freeze's lair, just to then get frozen in prison for an experiment being done to find the cure for Nora. All while this is happening, Kite Man and Ivy are trying to get a venue for the wedding, and it features the greatest villain I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Condiment King from Batman the Animated Series. Uh, I love it. Overall, this episode is mostly fun. Harley is still selfish, but I'm all for an episode featuring Freeze because my god is he so good in this. He does die though, which sucks that they would bring him in just to kill him off three episodes later, but I mean this scene is up there with Ivy's death when it comes to emotional scenes. Yeah, not much else to say about this. 7 out of 10. What do you want to watch? We could watch Harley Quinn. <laughs> No! Have you seen the show? Oh, God, no! 
It's just another heavy-handed female empowerment story where the true villain is the quote-unquote patriarchy. So basic. Yeah, I guess. I heard Harley takes down Joker at the end of season one. I'm sorry, but Cucked isn't a great color on the greatest villain of all time. That's what this review says. Wait, you wrote this one. I can't believe you want to watch this show. You know they just did a three-episode arc where Harley beats Penguin, Riddler, and Mr. Freeze using nothing but her Mary Sue powers? Are you sure you haven't seen the show? Yeah, because I'm not a 12-year-old girl. Also, dude, why would I watch a show that's set in Gotham City, but Batman's barely in it? You watched all five seasons of Gotham. Because it wasn't a fucking tsunami of virtue signaling. Here, smart guy, let's see what this week's episode of Harley Quinn is about. Harley Quinn and her best friend Poison Ivy, C, aren't in this episode, which focuses on Batman waking from his coma and vowing to take back Gotham City. Fuck. Fine. But if it sucks, we're watching Family Guy. That's basically what the entire episode's about. 10 out of 10. Nah, but in all seriousness, this is a decent episode at best. We get more screen time with Bane, where he actually gets to show off how strong he is instead of always being the comic relief. And we even get a reference to The Dark Knight Rises. We need to communicate that we're working together and not to be fucked with. I got something I want to show you. Hey, boys! That's not a... That's just a picture of you. I'm not even on the poster. There's a... Where's the 50 and 50? What are you talking about? That's you right there. No, that is a shadow. I was born there, but that's not me. Batman finally comes back, except not really, because he's still recovering from being crushed under a building and put into a coma. But he does get a really insane suit that allows him to fly and even comes with a voice to talk to- What? Nope. W okay, what do, you, what do you mean, no? Nope. No what? That's not Batman. What do you mean that's not Batman? That's not Batman. Batman doesn't go around wearing Iron Man suits. He, oh my god. He literally has to in order to be able to move. Nope. Still not Batman. You're the Iron Man clone. I mean, Tom Holland is more of an Iron Man clone than this, and you're completely fine with that. Nope. Batman is an Iron Man. Batman should not be wearing Iron Man suits. Batman should wear underwear over ties. Sorry about that, as I was saying... Batman's suit is, uh... Pretty cool. But this episode isn't all full of positives. The other half of this episode is Batgirl. And just like I said earlier... Oh boy, is this character assassination! Batgirl in this series is basically just a modern day teenage girl with no personality whatsoever. And like I said, I'm all fine for change as long as it's executed properly. Gordon is a great example because his character is not comic accurate as far as I know, but I still enjoy it. Batgirl on the other hand is just so fucking annoying and every scene she's in she's constantly on IG Live and I I just hate all of this. I hate it here! Other than that, it's a decent episode. Six out of ten. I liked it. Bad girl should have smiled more. You want to watch another one? Fine. Whatever. It doesn't come out for a week? This distribution model is ridiculous. Oh, let's just torrent some hentai. <laughs> All the best inmates have daddy issues is the best episode in the season. The entire episode is basically a flashback scene inspired from Harley and Ivy thinking they found the Joker, showing the start of Harley's relationship with Joker and her relationship with Ivy, and it has pretty much nothing to do with the season. I love it. The entire episode is really entertaining, and it has fucking man bat. Fucking man bat. I love it. We also get the origin of the Joker, which ends up being Ivy's origin. Not a surprise. And we also get this funny joke. Fine. You want to know how I got these emotional scars? The ending ends up being Harley and Ivy knowing who they thought was the Joker was just a regular suburban stepfather and then getting arrested. And then this happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. 
overall, it's a really entertaining episode, and I love it. 9 out of 10. There's no place to go but down. Features Harley and Ivy being in prison, but instead of going to Arkham, they end up in the pit. Which, the pit is oddly wholesome. This episode also has Manbat and Zaz, and I'm so happy those characters got to have more recognition. The episode also has a really good emotional scene and a really nice ending. It does start troubles that I end up having later on. Other than that, it's a pretty good episode. Except for... Now, if you've seen my no-spoiler review of this season, you may recall me saying this. Episode 7 takes a turn with the comedy that it feels like a Family Guy episode at times. To explain this further, George Lopez is in this fucking episode! And it isn't the case of, like, Adam West and Batman the Animated Series where they just got him to voice a character as a little nod. Nope, this is full-on George Lopez voicing George Lopez. Did Seth MacFarlane write this? What the fuck? So yeah, I guess George Lopez is fucking canon now. 6 out of 10. Inner Parademons has... <laughs> Inner para demons has Harley being an awkward, obnoxious mess from kissing Ivy and Ivy and Kiteman having dinner with Kiteman's parents. Harley, trying to avoid her feelings, decides to try to take over the world, so she follows Psycho to Darkseid's dimension and gets a bunch of para demons and attacks Gordon. And look, this episode's just boring. Nothing happens. There's barely any fun about it. Only good thing from the episode is Ivy going off on Kiteman's parents, and that's it. I give this episode a bored out of ten. This episode fucking sucks! The episode's plot revolves around Harley hosting Ivy's bachelorette party, inviting Catwoman, Nora, and some girl named Jennifer. While the subplot has King Shark being forced to marry some hammerhead in order to save his kingdom. Both these plots doesn't inherently sound bad, but holy fuck, the execution is atrocious. Harley is so goddamn annoying, selfish, and insufferable throughout the entire episode and somehow expects to get her way in the very end. Am I supposed to feel bad that Harley doesn't get to be with Ivy after her fucking bachelorette party? This is the most fucking selfish you've ever been. Am I supposed to be on Harley's side for this? Fuck no! Oh, and then the comedy is so fucking dreadful. Why am I watching a fucking Disney musical about taking a shit in the ocean in a goddamn Batman TV show? Why is there a little wart for wart family guy joke in here? Look, you're here. You're queer. Get used to it. Why is every other joke in here about dicks? Why does this episode exist? Nothing about this episode is enjoyable. I'd rather be stuck with the bar mitzvah kids, Damian Wayne, Stephanie, and Batgirl than go through another second of this abomination of an episode. Fuck this piece of shit. Zero out of ten. Okay. Okay, I'm... I'm calm. Die Hard features Harley being alone after being rejected by Ivy, so she heads down to Wayne Tower and ends up running into the guy who she and Ivy thought was the Joker back in Episode 6. Later on, the place gets held hostage by the goon from Episode 10 of Season 1, which was really cool to see him back. Also, can we just talk about the fact that he appears in Episode 10 of both seasons? Anyways, Harley and Joker escape, and then it's revealed that Psycho is now the main villain of the show. We get a pretty cool rooftop fight, the death of Psy, which is insanely emotional. And the episode ends with Joker being brought back. Overall, a pretty decent episode. I'd give it a 7 if Harley wasn't so fucking insufferable, so 6 out of 10. A fight worth fighting for doesn't start off great, because it starts with a fucking recap intro. I mean, it has a fourth wall break, which is cool, but a better execution of a fourth wall breaking recap intro would be episode 16 of Kill a Kill. And I guess they did sort of the same thing back in episode 5, which I enjoyed, but this one... I don't know. So overall, I'm very mixed with my feelings of this intro and outro. But the actual episode? Isn't that bad. Once again, in my no-spoiler review, I said this. Episode 11 is where the show really picks up, which is funny, and I cannot say why. And now I get to explain to you why it's funny. The reason why the show picking up in this episode is so funny to me is because this is the episode where Joker is back. So basically, the character that was just kind of there and not really likable in the first season is the best part about this season and is what makes it better. Speaking of likability, Joker is actually likable in this episode. Yeah, I don't know either. Not complaining, though.
Anyways, the episode follows Joker and Harley trying to find the Queen of Fables book in order to free the Justice League so they can stop Psycho and all the parademons from destroying Gotham. We even get a Psycho backstory that has this pretty funny punchline. Alright, I'm gonna make this quick. When I was a little boy, my mother brought me to the county fair. There was a Ferris wheel, a big, beautiful thing, and you had to be a certain height to ride it. And of course, I was too short. But my mother would always say, Patience, Eddie! I'm sure next year you're gonna be big enough! Let me tell you right now. The next year rolled around and I hadn't gotten any taller. Years went by. I hung upside down from my ankles for hours. I took growth hormones. Anything to ride that big wheel in the sky. I never did get there. But then one day something very unexpected happened. All those people fell to their death. And it was a rush. I thought it was so satisfying to watch all those people die. And that's when I decided to hate women. Overall, it's a pretty enjoyable episode. And once again, I said this. It's one of the better episodes, and there's a scene in here where I wish I knew Spanish. Well, here's the scene. Puñeta, eres un fucking cabrón. Hijo de la gran puta, mentiroso, no lo puedo creer. Y no te creo. Vete a la mierda! If anybody wishes to translate that, please do so. But yeah, good episode. 8 out of 10. Lover's Quarrel follows Harley and Kite Man trying to save Ivy from both Psycho's mind control and the Justice League. And overall, it's a pretty good episode. Superman has two good jokes in it. I'll ask you this once. Where is Dr. Psycho? Oh, what? Because I'm an alien, I understand all alien languages? Okay, I know a little parademon, but it's still a racist assumption. Be better. You realize the Man of Steel isn't just a clever nickname, right? Which, like I said in my last review, me liking Superman is a pretty good thing because I always had no interest in the dude. The episode also has proper representation of Clayface, and I couldn't be any more happier. Also, I like Harley's reaction to it. Are you shitting me, Clayface? You could change into this at any time and chose gypsy co-eds and divorces? Yeah, it's a pretty good episode with a fucking insane ending. 7 out of 10. The Runaway Bridesmaids, the finale episode of this season, and it's... Okay. The best parts of the episode is Frank. <clears throat> Come to ask for an invite to our wedding, Ivy? <laughs> Change of plans, <laughs> sauce fucker. It's called the man It's your goddamn best friend wedding! It's holiday season in it, bitch! It's holiday season! Ivy goes off on Harley. You're ruining my wedding. I'm trying to do the opposite of that. I keep finding people that you've punched out, and then you made the photographer faint. But look, I just need this day to go smoothly for Kite Man. I mean, he's a mess. I mean, he didn't even want you here. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. It's just, look, this is supposed to be the happiest day of my life, you know? I mean, that is, if you ascribe to those patriarchal norms about a woman's value fading after she gets chosen by a man. Which we don't, right? Regardless, it's supposed to be overall a really good vibes day, and it's barely hanging on by a thread. I mean, I feel like I'm just sick of managing everyone's feelings. I have my own. I'm nervous, and I'm scared about the future, too, but just, I don't get a time to just, like, reflect about that, you know, before I walk down the goddamn aisle forever. No, because someone's going around cold cocking all my goddamn vendors. And when Kite Man has enough of all the shit he's had to go through throughout the entire season. Okay. Let's do this. Hell no. What? I should have known the third time I proposed, every step in our relationship I've had to do over and over and over. And, and I'm, just, I'm, I'm not. After all of this, I'm not redoing my wedding. Don't you, don't you want to marry me? Of course I do. But you don't. I saw your face during the vows, and I knew your heart wasn't in it. I may be simple, but I'm not a fool. It is hard to finally admit it, but since you refuse to, I will. I'm not the person for you. No. Oh, shit. Like you said, Ivy, I deserve the best. The worst parts about this episode is the Family Guy humor is back. Now with this, it's a bit more understandable because Tim Burton made Batman 89, which ended up giving us what Batman is today. But I still hate this kind of humor in a fucking Batman show. Look. I'm all fine with celebrity cameos, but if you're gonna involve it into a comic book world, 
then just make them be a voice or just a character and not a self-insert making the celebrity canon. Marvel did this perfectly with Stan Lee. He was in every movie, yet he was never Stan Lee as Stan Lee. It was just a Stan Lee cameo and he was whoever he was in the movie, you get me? Moving on. Harley is also the worst part about this episode and I kind of hate how she ends up getting what she wanted in the end. Overall, it's a decent episode and a meh ending for a season. 6 out of 10. If you've seen the review for my last season, you might remember when I got to the last episode, I said that if they had cut out the cliffhanger, it would have made it for a perfect finale of just the show as a whole. Yeah, after this watch through, I kind of wish it was the finale of the show. This season was disappointing. My two biggest problems with the last season that I hoped this season would improve on was the pacing and Harley Quinn herself. Now with the pacing, the first episode is abysmal and the rest of them are fine, but I still think it's a problem in here. But Harley, on the other hand, ends up being worse in this season than the first one. And I really hate saying this, but I honestly think Harley becomes a bit more of a Mary Sue in this season than she ever was in the first one. Now, I'm not saying she is one because she does get hurt both physically and mentally, something that a Mary Sue wouldn't experience, but the point I made in the first season review where Harley suffers through consequences is almost non-existent this season. She's even more selfish and ignores people even more than the first season, and yet she just kind of gets away with it all in the end. Episode 9, she wants to be with Ivy and expects Ivy to just drop the love of her life and be with her, and when that doesn't happen, the show tries to make you feel bad for Harley. But then four episodes later, or Harley gets to be with Ivy in the end and celebrate as a great thing. And don't get me wrong, I have zero problem with them being together. I just think the execution of everything and the way Harley's written throughout the entire season makes this ending not deserved. On top of all this, the comedy is mostly misses and hits. The season also has some of the worst moments and episodes in the entire show and then whatever the fuck episode 9 is. So, what do I think the writers could do to make the show better or even the next season better? Well, starting off, it's looking like the studio is only being given 13 episodes a season, which isn't a good move because some of the plots in this season, just like the last one, need more time to develop. So if they're only being given 13 episodes, try to slow down and not put so much shit into it where you end up having to rush through the entire season to have everything, or the studio just needs to get them more episodes per season. Secondly, quit with this new kind of humor because it doesn't work at all and is just taking a piss on the humor in the last season. And my final point, Harley needs to change. Both seasons have Harley trying to change, but she doesn't at all. Sometimes you'll get a little character arc like her getting over the Joker, but most of the time she just continues being selfish arrogant and obnoxious and it doesn't make for a pleasurable experience instead of harley not being selfish you get her or other characters saying that she isn't or she's trying while she continues to be the same character and that's literally not change all i'm asking for is to not tell me that harley's changing show me that harley's changing but yeah the season was a disappointing follow-up and it sadly makes me very wary for the next one i'm gonna give it a 4 out of 10. All I can hope for the next season and the future of the show is that they go back to what made the first season so good and expand on that, fix the pacing, and actually show change with Harley. Hey guys, that's the video. What did you think of season two? Tell me in the comments down below, because like I said in my no spoiler review, I'm really interested in what people have to say about this season. If I'm the only one who thinks this way about it, I'm not gonna be surprised. <laughs> Anyways, I want to give a thanks to the wonderful Swedish boy that is Jonas for giving me his awful opinions. My social media is on the screen in the description and comment section if you want a tad bit more content with the occasional update. I also make music. My new album is out, so if you like instrumental music, please go listen to it because it is some of the most personal and proudest work I've ever made. Links to that will be in the description down below and in the card. I also have a Discord server where you can get to play games, claim waifus, and overall help with building the community we're trying to build. So if that sounds interesting to you, link to that will be in the description and comment section. Have a good day. Peace out.